Happy New Year, everyone! I hope you are doing well. It's the first video of uh, 2023. Last week, I talked about the concept of uh, separation of waist and hip in Tai Chi. Today, I will talk about the same but for Xing Yi. Also, as mentioned last week, starting today, I will add a new section at the beginning of each week's video called Dao De Jing Commentary and Xiu Dao, which will mainly focus on introducing some important texts including and related to Dao De Jing and explain them in both philosophical and practical Xiu Dao contexts. I hope you will enjoy this part. Of course, there are timestamps mentioned for each section, so it's very convenient for you to skip the section should you dislike it. Dao De Jing literally means the classic of the way and the virtue, and is commonly translated as the Book of Dao. It's traditionally attributed to Lao Tzu through some scholars believe that it was edited and complied by Lao Tzu based on the popular philosophical teachings of his time. Dao means the way, De means virtue, and Jing means classic. In the West, most translations of the book title only emphasizes the word Dao and pay little to no attention to the word De or virtue, which in my opinion is a mistake. Dao De Jing is a small book with only 81 short paragraphs and 51 26 words in total. It is worth noting that there have been many different versions of this book published in history, so the total word count may differ between versions. In history, there have been more than 1,000 commentary books on the Dao De Jing. Some parts of this book are very hard to understand, while some others are very hard to even make any sense of due to many reasons. For example, in ancient times, Chinese writing did not use any punctuation. As a result, a sentence in ancient Chinese may be read in different ways, with totally different meanings. So, a good solution to solve this issue is to work on the whole document and find interconnections among each sentence. This is part of the reasons why so many scholars, politicians, emperors, and philosophers provided their own commentaries in history. In Dao's history, there is one book titled Dao De Jing Chan Wei, or Explanation of the Subtlety of Dao De Jing, which contains the teachings of Huang Yuan Ji and is actually a commentary on Dao De Jing. This book was edited by Huang Yuan Ji's students. There have been a few people in history who used the name Huang Yuan Ji. Huang Yuan Ji, who taught his students Dao De Jin, was alive in the middle of the 19th century. However, many people believe he was the same person who was active in the middle of the Yuan Dynasty about 500 before the middle of the 19th century. Regarding more information about Huang Yuanji, I will find a chance to talk about him more in the future. <coughs> now, let's focus on the book Dao De Jing Chan Wei. This book explains Dao De Jing based on Taoist meditation. Ever since the publication of his book, a new way to study Dao De Jing, as outlined by the book, 
has become more and more popular in the Taoist community. Of course, such an approach existed even longer before Huang Yuanji's time. But Huang Yuanji was the first to systematically comment on Tao Te Ching for Xiu Dao practice purposes exclusively. To those who study Taoist culture and are interested in Taoist internal cultivation, Tao Te Ching Chen Wei or explanation of the subtlety of Tao Te Ching is the must read. Also, beside this book, Huang Yuanji's students edited some other prominent Taoist documents based on his teaching, such as Le Yu Tang Yu Lu, O Teaching Record of Le Yu School, which are all important references to understand Huang's system. Some people may ask me if an English translation exists, and the answer is no. By the way, I have mentioned all of the, those titles in my prior videos. About different writings about Dao De Jing's commentaries, I have read almost all the available documents. I personally find Huang Yuanji's commentary to be the best among others in terms of its depth of information for Xiu Dao. So, my video will be based on different historical books, especially Huang Yuanji's document plus my own understanding. Also, this part will be like the T introduction section in previous videos. It will not be very long. I hope you will like it. With that, let's get on with today's main topic, Yao Kua Fen Li in Xing Yi. Topics covered in today's video include first, review of Yao Kua Fen Li, second, Xing Yi body structure and Yao Kua Fen Li, third, Xing Yi practice of Yao Kua Fen Li, fourth, principles of Yao Kua Fen Li, fifth, misperception, sixth, demonstration, and seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Review of Yao Kua Fen Li In last week's video titled Internal Style Concept 66, Separation of Waist and Hip in Tai Chi, I introduced the concept of dealing with the practice of the waist and the hip by separately managing each movement. I also mentioned the meaning of waist and hip used in martial art practice and pointed out the reason why many Tai Chi practitioners misunderstand the difference between these two body parts. Reasons such as the language used in ancient martial art training documents being different from the modern definition, and so on, contributed to those unnecessary misperceptions. I also explained how to practice the separation of the waist and the hip in Tai Chi. So, the waist or yao is the part between the end of the rib cage and the hips, and there are two parts of the waist, including the lower back area or the area opposite the navel, and the sides of the body that form the collective second part of the waist. The qua or hip area is on each side of the pivots, an area that is around the anatomical ball and socket joint. In Tai Chi practice, the proverb Yao Kua Bu Fen or no differentiation between waist and hip is used to describe a common mistake that a practitioner cannot differentiate between the waist and the hip. In Xing Yi practice, this proverb also plays the same role as in Tai Chi but in different ways, which will be discussed later in this video. So, as a practitioner of no matter whether Xing Yi or Tai Chi, 
understanding the concept of yaw kwa fen li, or the separation of waist and hip, is the key to reaching an advanced level. It is especially important in Xing Yi practice since Xing Yi is a Fa Jin or power release oriented style, and managing the relationship or coordination between the waist and the hip is critical. A practitioner cannot have a powerful Fa Jin as long as the mistake Yao Kwa Bu Fen occurs. Xing Yi's Fa Jin is greatly attributed to the waist and the hip practice due to Xing Yi's unique body structure. So, what is the relationship between Xing Yi's body structure and Yao Kwa Fen Li? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Xing Yi Body Structure and Yao Kwa Fen Li. Xing Yi's fundamental body structure in both static and dynamic states is based on the unique Sun Ti stance. This body structure maximizes the possibility of power generation and fast movement. In martial art practice, body structure in a dynamic state is closely related to Shen Fa or body method, which is the foundation of martial application. Compared to many martial art styles, Xing Yi's Sun Ti stance based body method has many advantages in martial combat since it helps a practitioner to generate martial power and move the body faster, which is considered a result of a good Shen Fa in general. For example, the body weight distribution on both feet, and uh, the slightly forward leaning upper body, and uh, especially the whole body power generation mechanism are just some instances to explain the reason about what makes Xing Yi a practical martial art style. So, what is the advantage of the Xing Yi Sun Ti based body structure? Well, this body structure can ensure the Dantian power is generated much easier than with the horse stance and the front weighted stance. The term front weighted stance is the term that I created to describe the style of stance that the body weight is mainly on the front leg, which is the opposite of the Xing Yi stance. The Sun Ti based stance of the bike weighted stance makes the lower Dantian area not only flexible but also helps to generate Dantian power, which is the mechanism why Xing Yi is famous for its powerful Fa Jin. Speaking from research and experience, Xing Yi's Fa Jin is mainly attributed to its stance especially the relaxed Dantian area. Xing Yi's Dantian area is the same as Tai Chi's Dantian area that was described in last week's video, link is in the description. Physically, the Dantian area includes the waist and hip areas. I can't emphasize enough, in martial art practice, Dantian is a physical area used to generate martial power, which is different from the Dantian in Xiu Dao. I have introduced the different concepts and explanations about the Dantian in a video titled Dantian, the source of internal strength is planned, link is in the description. So, in Xing Yi, Dantian rotation especially the vertical Dantian rotation, is the key to Xing Yi power generation. And the separation of the waist and the hip is the prerequisite of it. Dantian vertical rotation 
is impossible to achieve without understanding the method of separation of the waist and the hip. Compared to last week's video, yes, Tai Chi applies the same concept in creating vertical Dantian rotation, but the mechanism of Xing Yi's Dantian vertical rotation is a different one, which will be introduced in the following section of this video. So, Xing Yi's San Ti based stance is suitable for power generation, and the separation of the waist and the hip helps a practitioner to generate the vertical Dantian rotation, which is the Dantian power practice of Xing Yi. This was considered a secret in the older days, and I am sharing it with you today. Going forward, make sure to pay attention to this method and with practice, your Xing Yi Fa Jin will definitely improve. To summarize, Xing Yi's body structure requires a different method of Yao Kua Fen Li practice. So, how should you practice Yao Kua Fen Li in Xing Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Practice of Yao Kua Fen Li in Xing Yi. In martial art practice, determining the physical place of each part of the waist and the hip is the first step. There have already been determined in last week's video as well as reviews earlier in today's video. The next step is to understand the function of each part. For example, the hip is used to maintain a structure in Fa Jin, while the waist, including both the lower back part and the side parts of the body, is used to both manage turning and weight transfer. Then, how do these two parts coordinate with each other in power generation and the changing of a body method. These topics should be discussed in detail in order to fully understand them. Let me elaborate on them one by one. First, the overall practice of separation of the waist and the hip is to know that one of them should be a dominating factor in the Dantian movement. In the vertical plane, there are two types of Dantian movements, including both upward and downward. At the horizontal plane, there are two types of Dantian movement, inward and outward turning. First, upward and downward movements. When one side of the lower dantian moves upward, the other side of the lower dantian moves downward. These are the upward and the downward movements of the lower dantian area, together making up the vertical dantian rotation. So, the upper movement of a dantian is pushed by the hip toward the waist, while the downward movement of a dantian is pushed by the waist towards the hip. This is the mechanism of the vertical movements of a Dantian rotation. Of course, easier said than done, but at least now you know how it should be done. Second, inward and outward turning of the lower Dantian. When the edge of the lower Dantian extends backward, it is considered an outward turning. Likewise, when the edge side of the lower dantian extends forward, it is considered an inward turning. In the case of the outward turning, the same side of the hip and the waist move towards the same point behind your body, while the hip and the waist move toward each other at the same time. In the case of the inward turning, normally the hip fixed its position and the waist turns toward the center line. Now it has become very abstract. I would like you to pause this video and give it a try. Also, 
you may have to listen to that part multiple times in order to fully understand it. It is an advanced topic and you need to experience it before moving forward. So, to manage a three-dimensional rotation of the lower Dantian, at least two circular rotations including both vertical and horizontal ones should be practiced. Compared to Tai Chi, which mainly involves the hip in a leading position with the waist following it, in Xin Yi, sometimes the hip leads the movement, while some other times the waist pushes towards the hip. These complicated Dantian rotation mechanisms need to be practiced carefully, or else you will not have Fa Jin no matter how much Xing Yi you practice. Also, it is worth noting that there are more complicated lower Dantian rotations, which are more advanced topics, so let's keep it for the future. Li Luoneng created Xing Yi based on Xin Yi practice. He emphasized the forward and the backward movement more than the upward and the downward movement, but that does not mean that there is no vertical body movement. Actually, in order to master Xing Yi, especially the Hebei style of Xing Yi, subtle vertical body movement is critical. Only those who do not know how to correctly practice Xing Yi claim the lack of vertical body movement of this style, which is their personal practice mistake, not a problem in the style itself. Without the vertical body movement, it is impossible to have a Xing Yi Dantian rotation. So, you need to have both vertical and horizontal circular movements of the lower Dantian even though the vertical rotation is very subtle. The separation of the waist and the hip is the key to having a three-dimensional Dantian movement. Please watch my Xing Yi 5 Elements videos on this channel and pay close attention to the vertical motion of my demonstration, you will be able to notice the body movement. Again, observing a good demonstration, understanding the reason behind the movement, imitating the movement and eventually internalizing it into your own practice is the very useful skill in martial art practice. That skill itself can be improved with practice. So, what are some important principles of Yao Kua Fen Li used in Xing Yi practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4 Principles of Yao Kua Fen Li. Abstract topics can be better understood with additional relevant principles to reinforce your knowledge in the learning process. I have introduced the three principles of Yao Kua Fen Li used in Tai Chi practice in last week's video. Those principles can largely also be applied to Xing Yi practice, but at the same time, Xing Yi's unique body structure requires some specific principles for correct practice, or else the advantages of the San Ti posture based style will never be achieved in training. So, let me introduce three of them in today's video. All of them are my own creations since no relevant proverbs existed prior even though the teaching and the practice did. They are first, Kua Shu Yao Ding, the hip shoots the waist pushes. Second, Hua Wei Zhou, Yao Wei Men, the hip is the axis, the waist is the gate, and third, Yao Kua Zhe Die, the waist and the hip have a folding motion. Now, let me explain them one by one. First, Hua Shu Yao Ding, the hip shoots, 
the waist pushes. Hip shoots forward is an old expression in older days Xingyi community, meaning that when stepping forward, the hip leads the movement akin to being an arrow extending forward, while the waist usually pulses towards the leading hips as soon as the hip starts shooting forward. So, it means that both the waist and the hip do not move at the same time, but instead, the hip moves forward through the pushing power generated commonly by the back leg. Instead of the waist on the same side following, Xing Yi waist movement emphasizes the motion of pushing, which means it pushes towards the front hip, the hip that leads the forward movement. It emphasizes the speed and the coordination of both parts of the lower dantian area, not moving together simultaneously. So, basically, this proverb is used to describe the requirement of the coordination between the waist and the hip in a straight and forward movement. This stepping pattern can generate the most power in Fajin movement, and is the most common stepping pattern in Xing Yi. If you want to practice Fajin, then working on this type of stepping while focusing on this proverb is a catalyst. Second, Hua Wei Zhou, Yao Wei Men. The hip is the axis, the waist is the gate. This proverb is used to describe the sideways walking. For example, the Heng and the Pao fist in the Five Elements practice. When the leading foot steps on the ground, the leading side of the hip is the axis, while the part of the waist on the side of the falling foot will move toward the leading hip with the contracting motion. It is just like a door moving around the axis. In other words, the leading hip is like a linchpin in that the whole waist area turns inward around it slightly. In the old days, people talked about Dan Tian Kai He or the opening and closing of Dan Tian. Actually, this motion is a part of the Dan Tian Kai He practice, which can be done in the two zigzag walking or circular walking patterns of the five elements. In other words, advanced practice can be done through basic movement practice, which is a common principle of any martial art practice. So, when you step sideways, no matter inward or outward, both stepping patterns can be used to practice the separation of the waist and the hip by focusing on the coordination between the waist and the hip. Again, it is the practice of one side of the hip with both sides of the waist coordinated together. Also, I'd like to point out that overall, our body movements follow the lower dantian movement most of the time. So, managing the relationship between the waist and the hip is another key factor to achieving a good body method or shen fa. Shen fa is also the result of the dantian opening and closing, along with the dantian rotation, introduced in the prior section. Third, Yao Kua Zhe Die. The waist and the hip have a folding motion. Yao and the Kua means the waist and the hip. Zhe Die means folding. This is the Xing Yi concept that was popular in the older generations. Many older generation Xing Yi masters, such as Li Sun Yi and Xue Dian, emphasized the motion that the waist moves 
towards the hip area in both stance and the movement. It is especially important in stand training, for example, the Santi stance. Xu Dian used the expression, the stomach is on the base of the thigh, or the waist moves towards the hip. We call it Yao Kua Zhe Die, or the waist and the hip have a folding motion, that the waist moves towards the hip. Unfortunately, this practice has been widely neglected by many modern Xingyi practitioners especially in the areas with the heavy Wushu influence, such as Beijing. Most Xingyi practices have forgotten this principle in the interest of quote-unquote looking better, which may not be a bad idea for Wushu form competition purposes, but it is severely lacking in many key martial functions in terms of Xingyi power generation. I hope this principle will be followed going forward, especially by the Beijing Xingyi community. Those were three important principles of the separation of the waist and the hip in Xingyi. As with other concepts, the separation of the waist and the hip in Xingyi also has more relevant principles, which I will save for future videos. Now, let's look at an important misperception of this concept in Xingyi practice. That brings us to the next topic. Topic 5. Misperceptions Abstract topics usually involve misperceptions due to the nature of the practice, and the Yao Kua Fenli is no exception. I'd like to point out and debunk one very common misunderstanding. Some people say Yao Kua Fenli is a good concept, as, so as long as I extend the upper body straight, then the waist and the hip will naturally separate. This is a very common mistake. Let me explain. Some people falsely believe that when the upper body is in a vertical straight position, the waist and the hip area will be naturally widened in terms of the overall posture of that whole area. Actually, this has nothing to do with the Yao Kua Fenli since the term itself means to manage the waist and the hip separately, unless they are managed according to their function and their intended objective. An outward or inward extending motion alone does not qualify as a Yao Kua Fenli at all. Also, like I mentioned in the prior section, this area has to be managed according to the traditional standard, which means that the waist and the hip should have a folding motion, which is the prerequisite in the physical structure of Yao Kua Fenli. I hope this mistake will be corrected going forward in the Xingyi community. Now, let me demonstrate a Xingyi movement to illustrate the concept of Yao Kua Fenli in Xingyi in the next topic. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I will demonstrate Xingyi's ego capture movement. To have this movement practiced correctly, the waist and the hip have to follow the separation principle. Ok, the ego capturing motion. So pay attention to the vertical motion of the hip and the waist. So from here, then Topic 7 Take Aways. First, review of Yao Kua Fenli. Separation of the waist and the hip means that one should practice the waist and the hip separately in order to synchronize them together in a coordinated way in order to generate 
strong martial power in martial application. Second, Xing Yi body structure and the Yao Kua Fen Li. Xing Yi body structure, I call it the Santi Pulsar based stance, a bike weighted distribution method, makes the Xing Yi stepping powerful and flexible, which requires the practice of Yao Kua Fen Li in order to maximize power of the nitro structure. Third, Xing Yi practice of Yao Kua Fen Li. Being able to generate martial power by rotating the lower dentin area in a three dimensional way is the mechanism of Xing Yi power generation. It requires the separation of the waist and the hip in order to meet the requirement of such martial effect. Fourth, principles of Yao Kua Fen Li. First, Kua Shu Yao Ding, the hip shoots, the waist pushes. Second, Kua Wei Zhou, Yao Wei Men, the hip is the axis, the waist is the gate. Third, Yao Kua Zhe Die, the waist and the hip have a folding motion. Fifth misperception. Many people believe that as long as the upper body extends straight, the waist and the hip will naturally separate. This is a misperception. The waist and the hip should have a folding motion, a prerequisite of Yao Kua Fen Li. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get a visual idea of Yao Kua Fen Li in Xing Yi practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.